this is, where are we on the timeline? One of the questions right now with the coronavirus crisis is, where are we on the timeline? Right? I did a series called The 22 Future Events of uh, the Book of Revelation. And so they are ordered. They're in a particular order, in a particular series. And I believe right now we're in the seven seals. Seven seals are broken. The seven seals are pre-tribulation. People have made a mistake to think that that is in the tribulation. But I've already, you know, I believe proved it scripturally that that is just a tiny adjustment that preachers on the end times or prophecy teachers need to make. And everything will then line up pretty well. So I believe that, where are we? I believe we're in the third seal, meaning the third horse. The four horsemen of the apocalypse that people know about are the first four seals. I believe we're in the third already. And here we go. I'll read it to you. Revelation chapter 6, starting at verse 5. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures say, A quart of wheat for a denarius. A denarius is one day's wage. And three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the wine. When wheat causes a day's wage, and wheat is what you make bread out of. So it's like a loaf of bread costs an entire day's wage. You know, in Australia, how much would that be? At least $250. Can you imagine going to the grocery store and bread is $250? That's what the Bible is predicting in the third horse. All right? And there's restrictions and there are shortages of food. So he says, don't hurt the oil and the wine. So is that oil petroleum? I hope so, because right now we see oil prices are down. Don't hurt the oil. We will have oil, and it will not skyrocket so that we cannot afford. Don't hurt the oil, and don't hurt the wine. So there is going to be enough drink. There's going to be enough petrol, if this is a clue about the end time. So what is the most likely scenario for this inflation, food shortages, that the Bible is talking about in the third seal? It seems to me that there is a global pandemic going on at this time. This coronavirus may very well be a man-made virus to bring a Hegelian dialectic. That is, problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution. As Trump said, the solution should not be worse than the problem. And right now, this global lockdown and this hoarding of food and this social distancing and this shutting down of the economy and no restaurants can open and schools are shut down, it may very well turn out that the solution is worse than the problem. But people are willing to take extra precaution because they are in fear. So it really looks like there is a pandemic. I say it this way, a pandemic is when there's an epidemic and panic going on at the same time. Now that's pretty bad etymology, but I'm just being funny. People are fearful, and when they are, they submit to their ruler's control. The rulers, of course, think that they're just doing good by controlling people, and sometimes they are, but when you give them too much power and too much leeway, every time in history, the rulers abuse their power. So that's the problem. Some people are probably asking what are these terms, you know, Hegelian dialectic, epidemic, pandemic. Let me explain it to you, and then we're going to talk about the timeline. First of all, an epidemic is very simple. Epi is Greek for upon. Demos means people. So when something comes upon the people, it's called an epidemic. And that's a word for the plague. A pandemic is the word pan. Pan, not panic, but pan means all. Demos, people. So it means all the people. That's when there's a plague that has crossed continents. They're called pandemics. So this coronavirus... Maybe man-made. Maybe it's a Hegelian dialectic. It may be designed to crash the economy, and that's all about Donald Trump because he's winning and winning and winning, and suddenly with one virus, the economy goes from, you know, at least the market goes from the top, you know, top, 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 and it just wiped off all the gains of three years in a few days. I mean, it's terrifying if you have your pension, and in America it's called the 401K, 
Uh, here we have superannuation, and Australia is a great country. Our finances and our real estate prices do not fluctuate up and down as much as it does for you guys in America, and that's just the way that our, our nation is designed a bit differently. But this thing, this crisis, may usher in the mark of the beast. It certainly makes people more compliant, makes them more open to a cashless society. In fact, people now prefer to not accept cash. I mean, I never thought that it would be so quick, but there are now signs everywhere saying, we do not accept cash. In the old days, you would see signs that say, we don't accept credit card. We accept cash only. But how suddenly these changes come. It reminds me of Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. Daniel 9 is the most important prophetic scripture in the entire Bible. It is amazing. There's so much in there. Daniel chapter 9. We'll just look at one verse, 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. He didn't die for himself. He died for us. And the people of the prince who shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. I'll read to you in the Amplified how it says this. Then after third, sorry, and after... 62 weeks of years, the anointed one will be cut off and denied his messianic kingdom and have nothing and no one to defend himself. And the people of the other prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be war and desolations are determined. So we know exactly what's coming upon the future. Things are going to come like a flood. You're not going to expect it. And suddenly, everyone's in lockdown. Suddenly, everyone's wearing masks. Suddenly, big changes. New laws. Military trucks. Hospitals that break down. So suddenly, the Bible already said, when it comes, you won't expect it. And it will not happen the way you think, no matter how great a Bible prophecy student you think you are. It will come like a flood. Here's the timeline of the coronavirus worldwide. On the 30th of December 2019, seems so long ago, a cluster of patients infected with a new virus was found in Wuhan, China. On the 7th of January 2020, a new coronavirus was isolated from these patients. On the 31st of January, Trump declared a public health emergency. The Trump administration announced mandatory quarantines. On the 2nd of February, non-U.S. citizens who recently visited China were barred from entering the United States. I mean, the very idea seems, you know, the Democrats hated it. Trump was saying the whole time that we need to vet people, and suddenly the whole world agreed. It's amazing how quickly things change, and amazing how, how God vindicates Donald Trump. It's such a major act of justice that God has done. On the 27th of February, Trump named Vice President Mike Pence to lead the coronavirus response. And he seems to be uh, quite a soothing, good personality that people are listening to, uh, very well presented, very well spoken. I pray he will become the next president after Donald Trump. Good Christian man. 29th of February, the U.S. expanded uh, or included Iran in the travel restrictions over coronavirus and raise travel advisory for South Korea and Italy. New FDA policy was adopted to expand coronavirus testing. On the 2nd of March, Trump pressed drug industry, the drug companies, to help contain the coronavirus. On the 3rd of March, a new policy allowing anyone to be tested for coronavirus came into effect, of course, subject to the doctor's orders. On the 6th of March, Trump signed a coronavirus spending bill. And 20 days later, on the 26th, the Senate approved the coronavirus disaster relief bill for $2 trillion. On the 11th of March, Trump announced suspension of travel from Europe for the next 30 days, excluding the UK. And my goodness, this affected the whole travel industry, it affected my itinerary, affected, I think, every every minister and public speaker in the world. 
Trump ordered on the same day the Treasury Department to defer tax for individuals negatively impacted. Trump called immediately for payroll tax relief. And then Trump met with banking executives to help the economy. Okay, that's a busy day. I don't know how many of you can do all that in one day, but Trump, I'm so glad. You know, Trump has this habit. He sleeps four hours a day. It's very hard to beat him if you're his enemy. Sleeps, the man sleeps four hours a day, and that's the kind of guy you want to vote for, right? Because you want somebody who's hardworking, not somebody who's just sucking the public purse to, uh, you know, enrich themselves. On the 13th of March, Trump declared the coronavirus crisis a pandemic. On the 15th of March, Trump asked the nation to join together in the National Day of Prayer. And I really think that this is going to be the key thing that brings a turnaround to the United States. I know the United States has a lot of sin. 50 to 60 million aborted babies. The blood of those babies is crying out. You know, judgment cannot really be averted in the end. But I pray that grace has been given because a national leader humbles himself and says, let's have a day of prayer. The thing is, he should read my chapter on the fourth commandment in Trump's unfinished business, because in this, I say it may not be enough. I predicted that he's going to have to do this. There are 10 agendas that a godly leader or a leader who's chosen by God must do. One of them is to declare not just the national day of prayer. That's not enough. In history, in American history, you must declare a national day of, they said in the old times, humiliation, fasting, and prayer. Now, the word humiliation is very strong today. We don't use that word. It means a national day of repentance, fasting, and praying. We don't mention these things. People are not repenting and not fasting. Therefore, the praying alone may not be enough. I just want to be clear about that, that I already 